Hi guys, guys. Welcome, welcome back to Beauty, Beauty Within. In one of our previous videos, we talked about five products and skincare tips we used to love but have since fallen out of love with. And in that video, our team literally couldn't stop laughing at how Ro replicated her 10-step skincare routine while I struggled with the peel-off mask. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. As a continuation of that video, we're going to share two more things we've learned after testing out hundreds of skincare products over the past few years. And more specifically, how we know if a product is working well or if we like it. And we're also going to demonstrate that in a little vlog portion so that you guys can follow along and learn with us. So let's just get into it, shall we? <laughs> Having tried many, many, many different skincare products and many, many different skincare brands, Fel and I wanted to share with you guys how we determine whether we like a product or not, how long it generally takes, what are the criteria, and how do we know it's really working. So Fel, what is the first thing you look for when you are trying a product? Or like before you even try it, what makes you like, dee -dee 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 -dee, like you're the one, I'm gonna try you. You're the one that I think about all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the reason like before we get into it the one of the reasons why we put this in here is because even people in the skincare industry that we talk to like people who have started their own skincare companies they always ask us how do you guys go through products and how do you like vet them how do you know that they're actually good and that was a really good question to share with all of you while you're out shopping for your own products <laughs> so for me I think it kind of comes in two streams one is ingredient focused and one is literally like application so at the beginning we'll look at the ingredients you know if it's a chemical exfoliating product what chemical exfoliants are in there if it's a soothing product what soothing ingredients are in there because like you will have different preferences right i know like my skin loves centella because i do get a little bit of redness and like sensitivity from here and there i think there's like a category of good ingredients that i love the ceramides and amino acids and all the like skin berry friendly ingredients and then there's like the superstar vitamins vitamin b there's vitamin c there's vitamin e tocopherol and of course vitamin a that i personally don't use as much but i know you use a lot what are some ingredients for you that you gravitate towards so anytime I see centella, green tea, chamomile, lotus extract, all those will have me peaked. You know, like a dog when they're like, book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. And then just quickly with ingredients, I also like to cross reference the key ingredient that they're labeling on the package and marketing and pushing towards you and where it lies in the actual ingredients because as we've found out that sometimes they like this holy grail vitamin c product has just very little vitamin c in. <laughs> so if the vitamin c is all the way down at the bottom then is there really even vitamin c like of course there there are but it's a very very small percentage here i have two products that i absolutely Absolutely adore the Pyongyang Yule Essence Toner and the I'm From Fig Boosting Essence. So this is an example of a product that has very little ingredients, probably about like six ingredients. And then this one has a little bit more ingredients, which doesn't mean it's bad whatsoever. But in terms of the number, it does have more than this. And what I like to do when I first look at the ingredients of a product is actually look at the first five or six ingredients because they do make up about 80% of the product. So what I love about these two products is that the first ingredient for both of them is actually not water. It's actually their key ingredient. So for this Pyongyang Yule, it's their milk vect root extract and it's number one on the ingredient list and it gives it that kind of subtle medicinal herbaceous kind of scent that this is known for. And it's just really soothing, really hydrating. Everything else that's formulated in this essence toner is is deeply hydrating and nourishing and it's just very simple now moving on to this one the fig boosting essence the first ingredient is fig fruit extract which is really impressive and it makes up 62.7 percent of this product so both of these this is like 91.7 percent of the milk vector root and then this is about 62 percent of the fig so both of them are really impressive in the way that they actually 
formulate it with everything that it says on the front. It's not just like, you know, the fig essence is right at the bottom of the ingredient list or the milk vect root extract is like right at the end. So whatever the ingredient is, whether it's green tea leaf water or centella asiatica leaf water, as if it's the first ingredient, it instantly gets me super intrigued, super peaked. And normally I find myself wanting to use those products more. So these are just two examples. But actually don't misunderstand that because some ingredients need to be very little, you know, like yeah. essential oils, they actually work fine. Yeah, so it's not bad, not bad. So a good example would be the vintage essence that I've been raving about for the past half of year. Half Amore. of a year. <laughs> I can hear like an Italian woman. Amore. <laughs> that I invested in like the full jumbo size because that's just how much my skin loves it. But I totally forgot that the first ingredient isn't. Green tea is actually water. The actual green tea is the fourth ingredient out of six. So that's still like a pretty tight ingredient list. Yeah, because it only has like less than 10. Yeah, it has six ingredients. So I think it being fourth, it's like, it's fine. But there are alternatives or there are dupes that have the fermented green tea essence as the first ingredient. I believe it might be Isentree. Oh, and another really affordable one is the Tony Molly Choc Choc green tea. They use green tea water oh, as yes. the first ingredient. Yes. And that one's a great line. That's the first step, you know, looking at what it's actually made up of. And then for me, the second step, it's like first impressions. When we get products sent to us or if we buy our own product or when we're at the store testing products, it's all about the five senses. So I'll look at the way that it applies the way that it feels, the texture and consistency, the scents, and then also obviously the price. Now all of this has to combine into a product that you like very much love, right? So then let's say you end up buying it. So after using it, I'll start to like observe what happens. Do I like the feel over my face? Because once again, the consistency for both of us really changes. All right. So if you know me, you will know I have oily combination acne prone skin and I just find for those skin types I love 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 gel consistency moisturizers because it's just so lightweight it sinks into the skin and it doesn't feel like you have a blanket over your skin like it's being suffocated but it's also very hydrating as well as being able to trap in all the hydration that you put in in your previous steps so for example I really love the iUnique Centella Calming Gel Cream because it has 70% Centella Asiatica water, which is very calming, soothes irritation. And then it's also got the tea tree leaf water. And then very similarly, I really love this Pyongkang Yule Acne Cream. It says it's a cream, but it is a beautiful gel raindrop. Let me show you. I'll put both of them together, actually. Very, very similar. They're basically like the same consistency which is why i love it it just glides over the face so this one also has niacinamide and then it's also got centella asiatica extract as well as willow bark which is you know that natural form of bha to very subtly help to control sebum in the pores and as well as that it's got licorice fruit extract so you know subtle brightening i am in love with this i think it's like not talked about enough both of these i know this one has a lot of love but i'm sharing this love as well because it deserves it. And then it's also got green tea leaf extract. So there's this one that I talked about quite recently, maybe a couple months ago, is the A by Bomb Blue Seeker as a Lean Juice Soothing Hydration Cream. This one is slightly more hydrating and nourishing in my opinion because it's got the really cute encapsulated oil in it. So I feel like if you're feeling a bit more combo and you need a little bit more protection, then this one is a great option. But these are like my loves of life. Holy moly. And then for you, I know you like the thicker, more blanket over the face type. Thing. Yeah, I like the glowing, the more emollient, the more oils, the more protected feeling. For me, when I have like oils and more emollient products on my face, like moisturizers that are thicker, I feel protected. But I feel like for you, you will feel like you're being suffocated. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's that here and <laughs> And then if I were to use more mattifying products, actually, I don't think I've used many or I've just blocked it out of my conscious mind because I just don't want to remember like any mattifying products. It's just yeah. like a bad experience. And when I use something matte, I'm just like, 
And I feel like something with texture, it's also pretty subjective. This whole process of defining or figuring out why or why don't you like a product is also very subjective. Personally, I feel like if you don't really get excited over a product, you're not gonna be excited to use it, right? Like if there's nothing about a product that's speaking out to you, whether it's the texture, whether it's a superstar ingredient, or whether it's like an innovative technology that the brand is somehow able to like put into a little beautiful jar, then you won't reach for it as much. You know, now that we're highly associating skincare with like a wind down routine, with self care, with taking good care of yourself, it makes sense to spend a bit more time to invest in products that like you really love. So to demonstrate what that means, I'm going to put on a moisturizer from one of my favorite brands. You guys know I love Dr. Jart's Siga line. I love their, I have so many moisturizers from them, but this one, this specific water drop hydrating moisturizer just doesn't do as much as the creams do. So I'm gonna put this on, leave it on for the whole day and check back in at the end of the day to show you guys how it doesn't last as long as I like it to last or like by the end of the day or maybe a few hours into the day, I already feel like my skin is a bit parched and starting to get dry again. So without further ado, let's just do the do to the do to the do do. Bing. So as I mentioned, this is a very beautiful texture. It glides amazingly and it just applies wonderfully. It's absorbing super quickly into my skin and it has that instant water burst effect, hence the water drop on the name. But because it is much lighter compared to the moisturizers that I'm used to and it's not a creamy texture, it doesn't have that long lasting effect. Okay, so put it on, we're good. Gonna move on with the day and check back in at the end of the day to show you guys what my face looks like then. So it's the end of the night. I'm about to wash my face and go to bed. Just wanna share with you guys how my skin is looking after using the Dr. Jar water. Water drop. <laughs> water drop hydrating moisturizer. So two things can happen if a moisturizer isn't hydrating or moisturizing enough is I either get dry, like I'll feel like the, especially like the corners of my eyes or like the side of my cheeks getting a bit taut or tight. The second thing that can happen is my skin gets oily or starts overproducing oils because it's not hydrating enough. So it needs to overcorrect itself, overproduce oils to compensate for the lack of proper hydration. So as you guys can see under my bangs, it's getting very messy and <laughs> My forehead's getting pretty shiny. My T-zone's getting pretty shiny, even a little bit of my cheeks and um, just like a little bit on my chin. So this is my way of feeling out how a product may not be as hydrating and moisturizing. This specific moisturizer would be good for someone with more combo oily skin. So for my dry skin, although this applies amazingly, although this feels great and it like, it's like a splash of water right when you apply, it's more about like long lasting hydration and how your skin feels in a few hours, in six hours, in you know, half a day at the end of the night. So for this, definitely not enough. So now that you've tried the texture, now that you've put it on your face and it is the feeling that you want it to feel, how do you know long-term whether this is like a holy grail or not? So then it goes into the results phase. So now it's the really testing over a couple of days or weeks or months. Every single product will have a claim and it will also work on each person's skin differently. And so I think that's where the personal experimentation comes in because some people will pick up something and purge. Some people will feel really hydrated with the same product. Some people will love it, some people will hate it. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, is this something that I'm willing to like keep using because I enjoy it? So I'm gonna give it a benefit of the doubt and work through it to see if it actually is or not. Hello again, guys. So I want to introduce you to a new product that I've recently introduced and started testing out in my skincare routine. And you might remember the brand. It's the Haruharu Wonder Black Rice Hyaluronic Cream. So if you've been watching along, you would have known that I'm absolutely in love with the 
toner. This is the toner form and basically this is their cream. I've been using it for maybe like two to three weeks now and this cream is so interesting. So it's not like a clear gel, it's like a gel cream with the texture that's really lightweight but it just absorbs so quick into the skin that it's like a moisturizer or a cream that I have never used or experienced before. So it like, huh? Isn't this the most adorable little thing? It's actually a rice. Oh my gosh. Adorable. I could die. This is the texture. So it comes out like this and it's so lightweight. And when you blend it into the skin and it starts absorbing, it almost just completely disappears on the skin to the point where it almost feels like you didn't apply moisturizer at all, but it's still giving you the feeling and the effects of moisturized skin. Like I don't know how to describe it, but it's almost like this invisible moisturizer feeling. I generally go in with my cleanser, I go in with the toner. It just leaves the skin, especially for like oily girls or like combination oily girls. This is a dream. The ingredients is in this is exactly the same as like this. It's got the hyaluronic acid, it's got the fermented black rice, which is packed with polyphenols and it's antioxidant and it helps with really hydrating the skin. And then it's also got the rice extract as well as the ginseng root extract. The only thing that might be a little bit polarizing to some of you is its very unique scent. So it's in this one as well, like it smells the same, but to me it's just not as strong here, but it's more strong in the cream. It's basically evening primrose and lavender oil. Personally, I don't like lavender at all, but to me it doesn't smell like lavender. It's just like this very like earthy, like oil scent. I don't know how to describe, but to me, no big deal because once you put it on, it basically disappears. So yes, I am in love with this line and I highly recommend it for all of you, even if you aren't oily or combination because I got Rowena to try this. I got my other friend who has very sensitive skin to try this and they both love it. So yes, that is my new baby. And most of the times for me anyway, I feel like after using it for about one week, I'll know because knowing my skin, some people say purging goes for like two to three weeks. If I'm purging for two to three weeks, I'm done. Like I'm done by week one. <laughs> I don't want to experience that. Even if it's purging, I'm not going to go through with it. That's just not what I want in life because there are many other products out there that can do the same thing without causing me purging, you know what I mean? But, you know, when it comes to things like retinol or vitamin A, you're more aware that it will cause purging and so you're a little bit more accepting of it. It's like when our teammate was sharing about her curology experience of how it's supposed to purge for six to eight weeks, but then that's also a very specific formula that's supposed to help long term. I feel like when you compare that with like a toner or just like an everyday serum or something and you are purging, personally, I would just like, ah, I'm scared. <laughs> So for dry skin, just like how for more like sensitive acne prone skin can easily purge, I feel like the result you get after you use a product is also pretty immediate because if your skin is dry and if it still feels dry, then the product probably isn't doing what it should. You can have moisturizers that apply beautifully, that blend beautifully, that absorb beautifully, but after an hour or maybe six hours, it just disappears. So I think that's the thing with moisturizers of is it really long lasting? So there's things like the Aven Aqua Hydrance Gel that has like the 24 hour bursting effect where the thermal spring water is Michael, Michael encapsulated. <laughs> Who's Michael? Tell me, Michael with the good hair. <laughs> <laughs> It's micro encapsulated thermal spring water that'll burst over, you know, a period of 24 hours. And just in general, things with a lot of botanical oils work well for very, very dry skin. And another test that I like doing is, especially for overnight, if I can put something on at night, go to sleep with it, rub my face all over my pillow, and wake up still feeling hydrated, it is creme de la creme. Like it's amazing a lot of times i wake up and i like i just feel like a raisin like my skin just instantly i'm like oh, so parched <laughs> hi beauties welcome home so what are we doing at home Rue? we want to take you guys home to show you how we 
feel about products that we just tried for the first time. So I have right here the Fresh Lotus Youth Preserve Dream Face Cream that you guys know I love and I've talked about a good amount, especially in my moisturizers for dry skin. And right here, I have the Peach and Lily's Matcha Pudding that you guys should know by now. Felicia raves on and on and on about. And Fel has the complete opposite. She has her matcha pudding open and then the, the Fresh Dream Lotus Cream in a box. So she's gonna try this. I'm gonna try the matcha pudding and we'll give you guys a good review. And this is just to show you complete first impressions because like we also wanted to test the ones that work for our skin and vice versa and whether it will suffocate, whether it's hydrating enough, like the dealio. So let's first start with you and my beloved Peach and Lily Matcha Pudding. Okay, beautiful box, little spatula. All right, so uh, the texture is is really nice. Mmm. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, don't you think it's like, co I think compared to your moisturizers that you normally use, it's probably not as like oily. It's pretty oily, not in like a heavy oily sense, but there's still like a good amount of, like you can feel it's like kind of protecting your skin. For this specific yeah. cream, for you, does it take a bit of work to get it to blend into your skin or does it just sink in? Yeah, I get what you mean. Sometimes like you have to kind of like work it in a couple of circular motions for it to like really absorb into the skin. And then once it's in there, like I feel, I look in the mirror and my skin is just like so evened and nice, but not shiny. I think that's why I love it. Usually creams that are lighter, they go on really nicely as with like most creams do. Like if it's formulated properly, if the texture is nice, if they care about, you know, aesthetics and like how it feels, for sure it goes on really nicely, but I have a feeling that it may not last as long. So what's the texture of this compared to the ones say like you normally use like the fresh? It's a bit more jelly, gel-like, and it's just not as whipped. It's not like that thick shea butter whipped. Yeah, this has a bit of oil, but it's definitely not as like thick in oils and rich as the creams that I'm used to, but it is nice. It is really nice. My skin does feel very nourished. It feels very hydrated, but I, I have a feeling that it might not last as long as my typical moisturizers mm. that are thicker, yeah. Eee, your turn. My turn! <laughs> it's funny that I have this because like, I don't even know why I have it. <laughs> now I'm excited! I think I was saving it for like a really cold winter's day and then winter rolled around and I just never like reached for it because it just sounds thick. So as falls an opening, interesting, it's different because mine's like this color. What is yours called? The Lotus Youth Preserve Face Cream with Super 7 Complex. Oh, mine's the Dream Face Cream. It's like a thicker version. Oh my god. Wait, would that mean yours is even thicker? Yeah. Actually, this one is the day version and Rowena has the night version. But when you look it up, it says it's formulated for the same skin types. Normal, dry, combination, and oily. So, <laughs> let's try it. So the thing with the Lotus Youth Preserve and the Lotus in general, it's super high in antioxidants. It's great for people who have stress and fatigue skin. And if you guys remember, when I first, <laughs> you look like <laughs> you're in pain. <laughs> The first time I really reached for this was one night I stayed up until 3 or 4 a.m. working on something and then I was like, okay, my skin is very, very sad. It needs help. It needs a night's worth of recovery. So I tried this. It's amazing. Belle is using the day version, which should be a little lighter, but how does this compare to your normal moisturizers? Okay, like... It is beautiful. I think because it's so rich and like nourishing and oily, it really makes it easy to like put over the skin. But I can see myself, these are the types of moisturizers that I tend to not use a lot of because like over time, my face would just become more oily. You know, throughout the day, oily skin produces more oil, right? But this is already setting you up on a base of like really moisturized <laughs> skin. <laughs> 
So like normally I start dabbing my face and trying to like wipe the the oil yeah. residue off, which then kind of defeats the purpose of using a moisturizer like this. But you know what's funny? It smells like a salad on the. It's like so fresh. It is. It's like it really is like a pond of lotus water. Yeah. I don't hate this. I absolutely do not hate this. It is so smooth. It is like delicious to apply. I Would you use this at night? Yeah, I think this would be the max for my nighttime use. And you know how like nighttime products are normally the more like deep <laughs> nourishment? Dude, I want you to try, I want you to try this one day and then see what that's like. Like this is already telling enough, I tell you. <laughs> Dude, I've been working this moisturizer in for like a solid <laughs> minute, trying to just like move all the oils around. So not bad, and it's not like suffocating, but it just feels unnecessary for me. I think that's the takeaway point. I'm actually pretty surprised with this, with the matcha nice. pudding. It feels good. And not sticky, right? No, not sticky at all. Yeah. So that's that. So there you go. First impressions. <laughs> Now moving on to our third and final point, it has to do with skincare and its long-term benefits and how we use it and why we need to do these everyday little small steps to create a future for us that is bright and youthful. And I think like one term that comes to mind is prejuvenation. It's prevention and rejuvenation because we don't want to get to the point where we're like 40 or 50 or 60 or even 30 and realize that our skin is like leather, you know? Even though I do want to say that it's never too late to start and the earlier obviously the better which is why we have this channel but we have also realized that products are there in place so that we don't have to look and fall into the trap of anti-aging <sighs> rejuvenation <laughs> there's like this uh, chime so with prejuvenation the first thing that comes to mind, I would say, is sun protection. <laughs> Something that the both of us for sure did not pay enough attention to when we're younger. I feel like had I paid more attention, my my freckles and hyperpigmentation won't be as prominent. When we went and got our face scan by La Roche-Posay, I was shocked. Cause I was like, I do such a good job of putting sunscreen on my face every day, but how come I have more sun damage than fell? And I was like, well, I guess it makes sense. Her, my skin's more fair, your skin is more olive. Do you feel like not doing it and doing it now for the past year or more, has it contributed to anything positive that you've been able to tell? Or is it more of like a long-term, long-term game? <laughs> <laughs> it's an infinite game. Thanks, Simon Sinek. <laughs> No, I think like even knowing you earlier on in the day, I would be like, wow, yeah, that girl is dedicated to sunscreen. And I'd just be like, meh. <laughs> but I don't feel that's a good habit to rely on. And even though I don't have drastic repercussions of it now, I am thinking of my skin and my health and everything else for the long haul because skincare isn't just for the now. It's literally protecting yourself forever and ever. <laughs> well, until yes. we perish. It's even like journaling. You journal one day, you write down one entry. It's not gonna change the world, but you look back and you realize, wow, I'm really glad that I went through these ordeals and experiences and ups and downs because they are the things that make up to the bigger picture. You know what? One thing that I realized a few years ago was that if you are just disciplined in general as a person right like you have a baseline of like expectations for yourself of like this is the things that you should do if you just do them it will bleed into other areas of your life so like if you have a disciplined skincare routine it's probably because you're disciplined in other areas of your life or having a disciplined skincare routine will help you be more disciplined in other areas of your life so i think it's like it all comes and goes and everyone has different keystone habits in terms of more tangible skincare ingredients <laughs> I feel like it also works the same, like retinols, vitamin C. If you want to build collagen, let's say, or elastin, or help plump up fine lines, it needs months to work. But then I think for me, what I've learned personally for my acne is an anti-inflammatory diet. And the diet plays hand in hand with skincare because your skin is like, you're seeing the insides of your body and you're touching the insides of your body because it's showing you, it's like an organ. Uh -oh. So like, you know. Touching the insides yeah. of your body. Ah. Yeah, it's the same thing. 
except like we randomly have hair on our organs. <laughs> But one of the biggest thing truly that I learned to help with like glowing skin is things that are anti-inflammatory. So um, omega fatty foods like salmon, nuts, um, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli. I love broccoli. I love cauliflower. I love beans and just in, like finding different ways to cook them so that you once again enjoy it. You know how we were saying like you're not going to pick up a product that you don't enjoy. You're not going to eat things that you don't enjoy. So. That's it. Skincare is for the long haul. Wellness is for the long haul. Self care is for the long haul. Belle and I are for the long haul. Forever and ever. <laughs> and if you believe in reincarnation, I always joke and say Ro and I were probably two little dung beetles, like pushing our little. <laughs> 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 and then in this life, we found each other. <laughs> <laughs>